is talking to Jesus directly. Yeah. And he asked Jesus directly, what do you want me to do? Amen. Jesus said, go on to Damascus. It will be told people about this. See how folk lie? Yeah. The Lord appeared to me and told me what to do to be saved. We got a man in scripture talking to Jesus one on one. And Jesus didn't tell him what to do to be saved. No. Jesus didn't give him any indication that since he called him Lord that he was saved. He told him, go on into the mass. When you get to the mass, it's going to be told you what you need to do. That's when I died. I said, Brother Saul, why tell you stop? Arise and be baptized. Yes, sir. Wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Amen. The preacher man, once again, this is the way God has determined Amen. that man needs to be saved. He sends men to the preacher. Mm -hmm. And the preacher tells him what thus saith the Lord. Amen. When you look at the Bible, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong. Amen. Right? When you ask this question, what must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. Don't ask your bishop. Right. When you ask this question, what must I do to be saved? Don't ask your pastor. Right. When you ask him this question, what must I do? It's me that needs to be saved. Don't ask your so-called reverend. When you need to be saved, Ask the Savior himself. Amen. The only way you can ask him is to look in his word. Amen. I'm going to give you five things mm -hmm. that the Savior said. Mm -hmm. Now, can we talk for a minute? I mean, because Jesus is the Savior. Amen. Is he not? And yes. if anybody ought to know what it takes to be saved, then certainly the Savior knows. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. So let's look at what the Savior said needs to happen in order for a man to be saved. Matthew chapter 13 and beginning at verse number 9. First of all, Jesus says, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. The first thing Jesus wants you to do is hear something. The Lord wants you to hear His Word. As a matter of fact, you better not only hear His Word, but you better understand and take heed to what it is that you hear. In John chapter 12 and beginning of verse number 47, Jesus says, And if any man hear my words and believe not, He says, I judge him not. Yeah. I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He says, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. So Jesus says, I must hear his word. Yeah. What in particular, Lord, do you want me to hear? Matthew chapter 17 and beginning at verse number 22 indicates what it is that Jesus wants us to hear. Mm -hmm. Bible says, and while they abode in Galilee, mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of me, mm -hmm. and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall arise again. Amen. What is saying, Jesus, I need for you to hear. I am the Son of God. They're going to take me. I'm going to be betrayed. They're going to kill me. But I am going to rise again. Right. He that has ears to hear, the Savior says, let him hear. Not only do the Lord want you to hear about what was going to happen to him, but he also wants you to believe on him as the Son of God. Yeah. In John chapter 3 and verse Number 16, the Bible indicates to us that the love of God is so abundant mm -hmm. that it did something for us that we needed to be done. Mm -hmm. Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, <coughs> and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. He wants us to believe on him as the Son of God. Yes. As a matter of 
fact, when you look at John chapter 8 and verse number 24, Jesus said, except ye believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Uh, turn there with me, if you will. He says, I say therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not, I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So he wants us to hear the fact that he was going to be killed. The fact he was going to be buried. And that he was going to rise again. Amen. That he wants us to believe. Now this is what the Savior himself is saying. Yeah, yeah. Every one of these passages. These words are coming from the mouth of Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus is the Savior. And so the Savior says. Yeah. You got to hear my word. Yeah. The Savior says. You've got to believe in me as the Son of God. Amen. But you're not done yet. Right. The Savior also says that you must repent of wrongdoing. Amen. Ever since Jesus started healing people Amen. and when sin was the cause of their infirmity, He would tell them, stop sinning. Amen. He would tell them, go out and sin. Oh, you're looking mighty funny here. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5 and beginning at verse number 14. In John 5, 14, we see that this man who had once been lying around the pool of Bethesda, once the man was healed by Jesus, Jesus, by the Bible says in John 5 and verse 14, findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. He says, Sin no more. That's a worse thing come upon thee. Not only there, but when you look at John chapter 8, beginning at verse number 10, when the Pharisees brought that woman who was caught in the very act of adultery, when Jesus had set the hypocrites straight by telling them, Whoever is without sin, you go on and cast the first stone. Those hypocritical men were convinced by their own conscience and they started dropping the stones from the skillies all the way to the eldest and then when the Jesus raised up the Bible says he saw none but the woman and he said unto her woman where are those thine accusers he asked her have no man condemned thee and she said no man Lord and Jesus said unto her neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more. The same message that Jesus gave the man who was lying around the pool of Bethesda. The same message that Jesus gave the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery is the same message that he's given to you and me today. In Luke chapter 13 and verse number 3, Jesus said, except we repent, mm -hmm, we shall all likewise perish. Repentance is a change of heart. It's not just stopping an action, but it is literally thinking different uh -huh, about the sin that you used to commit. It's getting to the point when you realize that what you're doing is an offense to God and that if you're ever going to be right with God, you can't keep on offending God. And so Jesus says that he tells us, nay, except we repent, we shall all likewise perish. And so the Savior said we must hear his word. The Savior said we must believe that he is the Son of God. The Savior says I've got to repent and turn away from my sins. But then the Savior says in Matthew chapter 10 and beginning at verse number 32, I must confess him before men. That's the reason when you come to the church of Christ and when people want to be saved, they have to come down the aisle and stand in front of the congregation and make